Hi folks in the VC, fellow YouTubers, all friends in the community. Okay, here it is. It's been almost two weeks since I got the 2017 Super Deluxe version of Sgt. Pepper uh, with the new mixes and I thought we'd sit down and do a little video, talk about my thoughts and before we get into this, I want to mention um, I will not be discussing the mono mixes or any of the stuff on the other discs, the outtakes. Uh, basically, you know, to the people out there that want to know if this is worth buying, if you like that sort of thing, if you like the stuff that was on the anthology series that they released in the 90s, um, this might be your cup of tea, might be something to invest in, because there's a lot of good stuff on here as far as that goes. Uh, including, you know, you got the Penny Lane, Strawberry Fields Forever, um, you know, all that neat stuff like that. So anyhow, I got a list here, some thoughts on, on this, and uh, it's going to be good and bad. I don't want to be totally critical of this. Um, this was Giles Martin's attempt to, you know, do something special for the 50th anniversary, and uh, I want to give him props for that. Um, so... However, I do have some negative thoughts about things too, so we'll talk about that. Okay, the first thing I noticed, because I just I took the CD out, the 2017 mixes, and I have Mom here actually working the camera too. Mom will probably remember that night, because she was here, when I put the CD in the CD player and turned it on, how loud and overpowering the tracks sounded. That would probably be, that's the first comment I have. The tracks are entirely too loud. I don't know what's up with these people that go into the recording studio today. Um, Sgt. Pepper was a, I would say probably a pop rock, progressive rock type album. It was released 50 years ago. It's not a freestyle album, dance record that's intended to be played in a club somewhere is where the music needs to be loud because you have a bunch of people talking, a lot of stuff going on, etc., etc., blah, 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 blah. So, you know, not just to Giles Martin and the other folks involved in this, I would say this probably to most of the people in the recording studios today. Turn the fucking volume down. It's too loud. Okay? So that's my first comment. Number two, the drums sound a whole lot better on this. Uh, that's the one thing I did notice. Ringo's drums sound better. You hear, a, a, it's like a kick drum in Good Morning, Good Morning. You hear it in Getting Better. Um, drums are incredible. They sound a lot better. Um, number three, the attempt to surround the listener with the music is kind of neat. Um, however, I want to I want to say this: I do not listen to music with headphones. Uh, typically, I listen to music on my computer because I don't have a full-fledged stereo setup right now, uh, due to living in townhouses for several years. Uh, I didn't want to piss my neighbors off, so I got rid of my amp and big speakers that I had. Yeah. I do still have my realistic STA 2100D though, and uh, we're going to recap that and give it some big speakers and you know, hopefully piss my neighbors off here soon. Uh, who knows? We'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, I listen to music right now through my computer speakers, which are Logitech Z5500s. Uh, I use the surround sound feature. Um, you know, so the attempt to surround the listener with the music is good. However, you know, I don't necessarily need center pan vocals because that's a lot of what was going on here. A lot of times when you would listen to the old mixes like here, this one here from 2009, which is basically what you get in the box set if you bought the stereo box set from 2009, this here you're going to hear the vocals out one side and you'll hear the music and the guitars and drums and stuff out the other speakers because that's what they had for stereo back then was uh, I believe four track stereo was used for this album. They had an eight track machine, but it wasn't yet hooked up. Uh, I believe that's the story I heard about that. So, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. So I like the attempt to surround the listener. It's kind of neat. 
Uh, number four, uh, the new mixes were pretty much based on the mono mixes, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, she's leaving home, plays a little bit faster, like on the mono mix, which is cool. Uh, lovely Rita, to my ears in the mono mix, always sounded slightly slower. I like that. That's the way it was meant to be sound because that's, you know, that's what the Beatles more or less signed off on when they went into the studio to do the album. They spent a lot of time mixing the album mono and then they left it pretty much to George Martin to do stereo versions. So not as much effort was, you know, done on their part to create stereo mixes. So, you know, I like the fact that it was based on the mono mixes and it sounds really great. Um, the posters, the cutouts, when I take this 3D cover off, you get what looks like the, uh, the old EMI tape box that they had back in the 60s. That was really cool. Um, everything that came with this, I gotta give whoever was responsible for it, you know, two thumbs up. I mean, incredible. Uh, the quality is just phenomenal. The artwork, the cutouts look great. The posters look great. Everything in terms of the looks, this 3D on the front here, because if you move it from side to side, it's actually almost like a 3D type thing. Can't do that too well because I'm sitting here and I got the the other things and you know the other discs is in the way, but everything top notch. They did a really nice job with that. Um, number six, and you know this is just a pet peeve of mine. It's not just Sgt. Pepper. It seems to be everybody making CDs today. Even this when they did this in 2009. Okay. Now, you know it's neat how it opens up. This, this version from 2009, you get the art and everything in there, and then the CD sits in here, and they gave it the nice little pretty Parlophone label, so it looks like the record. But, guys, I don't like cardboard. If you're going to make a CD, give me a damn jewel case. Give me the plastic jewel case that CDs came in. I don't like these stupid cardboard sleeves. They're, they're cheap, of cheap quality. Um... Yeah, and again, no attack on these guys and the people responsible for this at all. I don't like putting my CDs in cardboard. They belong in a jewel case, okay? Those things cost pennies. You can get hundreds of them in a store or online for not a lot of money. You know, I want my stuff in a plastic jewel case. So, again, not, just, not an attack on this package at all. It's pretty much everything that comes out today. Most of what comes out today that I've seen with my eyes is in that plastic crap. and I, or Not the plastic crap, but the cardboard crap, and I hate it. Okay, this is my, this is my final thought. Um, I was really hoping, and I talked about this when I did the, my initial thoughts about this project, I was hoping that they would reissue Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane on a 45 like they did back in 67. I know they were recorded during the Sgt. Pepper sessions, but the way it was done back then, they put them, they, they issued them both on a 45. I would have loved to have seen that come with the vinyl version, the deluxe vinyl version of this set here. That would have been neat, you know, for nostalgic reasons. They could have, you know, done, you know, today's mixes or and then maybe done a mix like they did from 67. Um, I think it would have been really nice to see. So, uh, you know, that's my final thoughts on, on, on that. Uh, you know, that's pretty much it. It's my thoughts. I typed them up. So, <laughs> so, you know, if you guys, you know, if you haven't bought this, you're still toying around the idea of doing it. Pick them up fast. I don't know how long they're going to have them around. Because I know, like I said, when I, I bought the box set, the stereo box set, after the fact. And it took a lot of homework and a lot of searching around. Number one, to find a real one. Something that wasn't a phony. Okay. Number two, you know, everybody had already snatched them up that were real good Beatles fans. So, you know, it wasn't much from the pickings. But I finally found one at a good price. So, if you're thinking about it, I hope this video was of help to you. Uh, you know, it's great. You know, if you like loud music, it's going to be fine. If 
you take this disc out and you throw it right in the car stereo, I'm going to give you a little hint. Turn the volume down because <laughs> you might blow your speakers up if you have it turned up real loud. Yeah, you know, uh, this version is much louder than this version right here. <laughs> this is the version from 09. This is much louder than this. So, anyhow, that's my thoughts. Good job. I commend the people. They did a they did a hell of a job putting this together. I mean, I had only heard about this a couple months ago, but I think the final product that was released to the public is just top notch. I got to give credit where credit is due. I paid a little bit for this, but you know what? If you're a Beatles fan, it's worth it. So, y'all have a goody goody. It's hot here in New Jersey. I'm gonna go crank the air conditioner up and. <laughs> See you next time. More exciting videos to come.